Hey, today I have the pleasure to host Ghali Ben Shkroun, specialist solution architect at Databricks, and his field is security. Hi, Ghali. Hello, Youssef. How are you doing? Good. Can you first introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, my name is Al Ghali Ben Shkroun. I'm what we call a specialist solutions architect. So. Um, I mainly work with the, the solutions architect team at Databricks, and my specialty is more uh, focused on security, cloud architecture, and cloud infrastructure topic within uh, Databricks organization. So I guess, you're, as you mentioned, your field is security. Exactly. Okay, I understand why you go to the gym. <laughs> I wanted to, to, make, to, make, to make this joke. Okay, I have a, a first question for you. Um, what are the best practices when it comes to deploying uh, an Azure uh, Databricks environment uh, behind a firewall? Because I know this is a tricky discussion and uh, you need to do some configuration to make sure that it works properly. Exactly. So basically before uh, talking about the firewall, let's understand what's the current architecture of a Databricks workspace. So if we go into if we go through this uh, architecture that I sh share with you, you will see here that we have an architecture based on Azure, but that's exactly the same on AWS and GCP. And the Databricks architecture is divided into two parts. The first part is this part, this one called control plane. And this control plane is the main orchestrator of our platform. So the control plane is uh, one of our uh, data, uh, platform part in which we can first uh, host what we call uh, Unity Catalog. So Unity Catalog is our main authentication and authorization uh, uh, engine that will help you to uh, provide to first decouple the uh, compute uh, part from the storage part and then also access all to, to all Databricks assets uh, within the platform uh, in a fine-grained way. Uh, a second part that is also hosted by the control plane is the web app and also the orchestrator that also help you then to orchestrate the compute. And this is the second layer of the Databricks architecture. It is what we call the compute plane. And basically within Databricks platform, we have two layer of compute plane. The first flavor of compute plane is what we call the standard compute plane or the compute plane within your VPC VNet. And in that case, the control plane orchestrate the deployment of VMs within your VNet, your subnets in order to access your data. And we also have the serverless compute plane uh, in which we also orchestrate the deployment of VMs. But in that case, it will be within a uh, our Azure, AWS, GCP, cloud and tenants in order to access your data. Basically, the compute plane is uh, the layer in which we access all the data. Uh, so basically, when we run some queries within the web app, it first sends the query to the control plane. The control plane translates this query uh, as a Spark job to uh, the compute plane, the compute plane executes this pack job in order to access the data uh, into the storage layer and then do the computation and send back to the control plane. And when we say how to secure uh, every layer of our three level architecture, we have to take into account three uh, connectivity. The first connectivity that we can have is uh, the user access, basically, when I'm a user and I want to access to the web app that is hosted within the control plane. The second level of security that we need to also to secure within uh, the Databricks platform is how we can handle the connectivity between the control plane and the compute plane. And the third layer that we need to secure is also the security between the compute plane and the data plane basically between the compute within your, your VMs and the uh, underlying storage that we need to fetch. In that case, what we, need, what we will need to do is always to create private endpoints on Azure or VPC endpoints on AWS uh, in order to access the data and also to secure access to the workspace. That sounds good. Um, 
in, in terms of uh, connectivity, let's first focus on the third layer, meaning the access of the uh, compute plane to the data plane. In order to do that, basically, the only thing that you need to do is to deploy your workspace uh, with two or three subnets, depending on how you want to access your data. Basically, the best practice should be to deploy three subnets, one subnet for host, one subnet for container, in which we will deploy all your uh, Databricks VMs and clusters, and then a third subnet called private endpoint subnet. And this private endpoint subnet will uh, host all the private endpoint needed in order to access other Azure services or on-premise services. For example, if I want to access to Unity catalog data within a storage account, what I need to do is just to create a, a, a private endpoint in this private endpoint subnet in order then to access uh, the storage account. And in that case, the connectivity will be done between the control, the compute plane and the data plane. And I have one question uh, for sure. the uh, subnets. They, they need to be need to make sure that you have enough slot for all the all the VMs. And what if, for example, I chose the wrong uh, number of uh, slots? Can I drop the the VNet and create a new one and associate it? Or it, once it's done, you can we, you can no longer undo it. Yeah. So basically, right now uh, you will have to redeploy your whole workspace, but uh, we have a private preview right now uh, that will be soon also uh, deployed and also promoted as a public preview in which you will be able to self-serve uh, the capacity to change your VNet, to change the subnet, or to change also uh, the subnet size associated to your workspace. Oh, that's amazing. Good news. Exactly. Good news. And even if you are not able to uh, deploy a lot of clusters uh, at the same time because you have small subnets, in that case, uh, the best solution should be to use the serverless compute plane. Why? Because in that case, uh, you don't have to worry at all uh, on the numbers of uh, concurrent clusters that you run within the serverless compute because in that case, the access will be done directly from our infrastructure to your uh, data layer, basically your subnets. Okay, makes sense. Okay, second part that we need to talk about is the access to uh, the workspace. And basically the user that is within his laptop in order to access, for example, the web UI or also the API. In order to do that, two way to implement that. First way to implement that in a secure way is to have within your Azure environment an express route on Azure or a AWS direct connect on AWS, or maybe just simply um, a VPN between your laptop and your Azure environment. In that case, it will help you to have a pri private connectivity between your cloud environment and your laptop. Then you will be able to access the front end, the back end private endpoint and the browser uh, authentication private endpoint that will handle the connectivity between the user and the control plane. So basically, if I zoom out, you will see here that when I'm a user, the network flow will be the following. Uh, the, uh, the network flow will go through first the express route or the VPN connection. If I'm auto uh, not authenticated, in that case, the network flow will pass through first the browser authentication private endpoint that will handle the connectivity between the control plane and your Azure Entra uh, ID, then send back the connectivity again to your environment in order to access the endpoint associated to the web app that is handled by the front end private endpoint. So it will then uh, uh, send back to you to the front end private endpoint in order to access to the web app and get back the browser in the, your browser, the front end application. Then if you want to access to any API uh, within any other application that is hosted on premise or within your VM, all the access will be also secured in what we call the private uh, uh, backend private endpoint that we can also call it as data plane to control plane private endpoint. 
And in that case, it will handle the connectivity between the user and the control plane, but also the connectivity between the compute plane and the control plane. So basically, when you want to secure the connectivity between the compute plane that is within your subnet and the control plane, you also have to create a private endpoint associated to uh, the backend private endpoint. Okay. And uh, uh, everything you mentioned so far, and um, when it comes to do like, or to deploy the, the platform, uh, what's your recommended way is like, for example, for the first time, should I just deploy the, um, the platform manually and configure this or just use Terraform uh, like from the beginning? Like what, what would be your recommendation here? My recommendation is always to follow the best practices. And in order to do that, I highly recommend you to take a look at this uh, great Databricks repository called Terraform Databricks SRA. SRA stands for Security Reference Architecture. This is a, a Terraform repository that is maintained by the uh, Databricks security community and that provides you a template to deploy your workspaces within AWS, Azure, GCP, and AWS GovCloud. So my uh, uh, recommendation should be to visit this repository, have a look at it, and also use this template as a baseline in order to deploy your workspaces and make sure that you deploy your workspaces with the same fashion, with the same configuration, and uh, in a redundant way and uh, with the capacity to you to deploy that as scale. And we, you will find the link of this of this uh, repo in the description of the the record the, the video. Exactly. And, and I have another question. Do you have any uh, environment already deployed with uh, with uh, all those uh, like behind the firewall and with private link and all the configuration you highlighted? Exactly. Yes, I already have it. But first, let me show you how we can deploy easily a workspace with uh, all the right configuration within the VM. So if I go into my Azure portal, and then you have the possibility to specify some first configuration, basic configuration. So you can create your own resource group. For example, I can specify it as uh, uh, this name, uh, workspace. Or G. So it will create for me a new resource group. I can specify a, a workspace name, workspace, then specify the region should be in uh, EU uh, West Europe. I can specify a pricing tier. Please be aware that when possible, use a premium pricing tier in order to make sure that you will have all the security uh, features within the premium pricing tier instead of using a standard or trial uh, pricing tier that won't have all the security uh, features that uh, we want to use in our deployment. And then you can also specify a managed resource group uh, in order to deploy your workspace. So I can specify this name as this one. After that, we have the networking part. So in the networking part, what we will have look at it is first, if we want to deploy an Azure Databricks with what we call secure cluster connectivity. So as I said, secure cluster connectivity is the tunnel that we make between the compute plane and the control plane. And in that case, the best practice should be to deploy that with no public IP and with secure cluster connectivity enabled. Then I will also specify if I want to deploy my workspace within my VNet. And I can say yes. And in that case, I will have to specify the virtual network that I want to use. For example, I can use this virtual network. And in that case, I will have to specify the public subnet that I want to use. For example, uh, public, uh, maybe host subnet. Specify the IP range associated to it, slash 24. Same for the private subnet. I can specify it as container-subnet. Specify the IP range associated to it, that's 0 slash 24. Then 
I can specify also if I want a NAT gateway, but it's not recommended. If you want to route all your traffic that needs to go through internet, I highly recommend you to, fi to uh, route all your traffic through the firewall. And then you have the possibility also to specify if you want to allow public network access. If you want to allow public network access, it means that you are not uh, mandatory using the front-end private endpoint. Otherwise, if you want only to use the front-end private endpoint, you should disable the network public access. And at the end, for the network security rules, in that case, you should specify that as no Azure Databricks rule. Then you can also specify the private endpoint that you want to, to create during your deployment. So the first private endpoint that you need to create is this one. So basically, I can go and create my first private endpoint. For example, this private endpoint will be for backend private endpoint. So I can call it as FR EGB backend private endpoint. The sub resource type will be Databricks UI API. And then you can also specify the VNet in which you want to deploy uh, this, uh, uh, this private endpoint and also the subnet in which you want to deploy this private endpoint. You also have the possibility to create a private DNS integration associated to it in order to make sure that the private DNS zone associated to your subnet is well created. And that's it. After that, you have the possibility just to click into OK and go into the encryption type part. For the encryption part, we can uh, check that after, but you have the possibility to specify also encryption configuration in order to encrypt your managed disks, managed services, and also the workspace storage account. And finally, after that, you have the possibility just to review and deploy all your workspace. That's crystal clear. Thank you so much, El Ghali, for showing us the different steps we need to follow to make sure that we deploy uh, uh, Azure Databricks behind uh, a firewall using all the features you have managed, including private link and, and all the other uh, features. Thank you so much, El Ghali, and uh, see you for our next series that will be about data sharing. Thank you. Cheers.